firstly grabbing money from traders around the city in markets and on the streets this was the norm for the cadres that were affiliated to the past regime of the patriotic front party but how is business moving now that the new president mr hagainde hichilema gave a directive that these people should move out of markets and let people do their business let's find out i know in a panonali pf but it's on the land that the energy of fire Pandu na mayo mnani ngare danda ulanga wa mutuka na ngulo mwa ume wa muma mnani wa tiri kuwasha. Chimo na kutira batu kaine pandu ndi muntu nse. Mwafa mwafi ashi. They were taking now the law into their own hands. The law was given to them. They were like they were voting the law of Zambia into their hands. So this thing that there there's no more cadres. Everyone is free now. And everyone is free to do whatever they can do. Because when when I when I put on my plot, when I put on my plot, like you sell one plot to, to ten people, mm. they are all cadres. They used to come. This one comes today, he sell the same place tomorrow again, brings another customer. So it was it was really a mess. For many years, the PF cadres committed all different kinds of atrocities both in the capital Lusaka and outside people lived in fear and those who spoke against them were brutalized they operated in bus stations and markets around the country where they illegally collected revenue from marketeers and business owners now that they have been told to move out of markets and bus stations on many occasions they have been seen looming in the streets trying to force themselves back in the system but the people have rejected them i sat down with mr chitambala muwa a business owner at simoson building along simon moralen and this is what he had to say well first of all let's let's begin by defining what a cadre is in the strictest sense of the the word the word cadre means uh a philosophical ideologist someone that's dedicated to the party someone that supports the party but in Zambia unfortunately the word kada is synonymous with brutality violence and ruliness uh, uh, just all kinds of uh, adverse sort of attitudes towards what a society is supposed to be and so ultimately what we have in Zambia is a group of young men who see a loophole in the system and that is to align themselves with the ruling party so that they are blanketed in a sense protected by the system for them to carry out their criminality that was rife during the patriotic front days under president lungu under the direction of uh, mr davis mwila who was the secretary general of the patriotic front they advanced this idea that you can do whatever the heck you want but as long as you align yourself with the party you were given free reign and now the cadres had access to money public money both in the markets and the bus stations and you must understand that bus stations and markets are a huge huge revenue stream massive revenue stream and this is the revenue stream that you have given these cadres access to of course the powers that be being the sg's office and others they were the main benefactors okay or the the beneficiaries of 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 this loophole but the the cadres were also beneficiaries they they had access to all this money so now here it is we have a a, a new change Uh, a, a new administration under the uh, president uh, Hakainde Hichilema who has brought about a new type of real politics which is cadres should not be given free reign young men young zambians should be entrepreneurs it's important to understand that the government whatever government whether it's the UPND administration whoever governments don't owe young people a living they don't what governments do is that they create an uh, an enabling environment for you to function and for you to work within the confines of the law to be a productive member of society we we had it wrong for so long it was the the opposite was true okay so now the advice my advice to young people is be engaged 
Don't sit around and wait for government to give you a living. We, we, there's, this, there's this pandemic in our country called laziness. Give me something. It's, you people beg on the street even when they don't have to beg. Give me some transport money. I don't have any money. Give me. Everything is about give me, me, me. Why? Because over the years we've created this culture of dependency. We've created this culture of, well, you know, you don't have to do much, but you can get a lot. And that's an imbalance. That's an imbalance. Kadas didn't bring sanity anywhere. In fact, wherever you found Kadas, what you found was unrest, uh, intimidation, fear. What the Kadas did, what you're referring to, is that um, when, when, whenever you had a huge presence of Kadas in the market, all you're saying is they were collecting money on behalf of interested parties within the party. Okay, for instance, and I keep saying this, the, the Secretary General of the Patriotic Front would direct Kadas manned by and headed by these market masters in, for example, City Market. They would collect all the money, take it to the SG's office. The SG would decide where the money would go. He would say, okay, we'll keep 80% or 90%, 10% will go to uh, this, that, and the other, and a, a few coins will send to the market. If you go to City Council today, you look at the account for City Market, almost no money is there. And yet City Market is a huge, is a massive, huge money-making machine. City Market churns out millions of kwacha every year. And so to answer your question, Kadas never brought sanity anywhere. The, in the Zambian context, let me explain. In the Zambian context, the only true role of a Kada should be when you go to rallies and then you've got these young men, you tell them, okay, the crowd, you've got a crowd of 10,000 people. Make sure the 10,000 people stand behind this line. Make sure that the 10,000 people are not unruly. That's the role in the Zambian context. That's the role of a kada. In the Western world, the role of a kada, kadas in the Western world donate money because they believe in the cause of the party. In America, if you are a kada, you support your party, not verbally only. You support your party financially. But in Zambia, it's switched. It's, it's the party that gives the kadas money or the party that gives the kadas access to public money. Public money doesn't belong to Kadas. Public money does not belong to secretary generals of parties. Public money does not belong to presidents of the party. Public money belongs to us, the public. Taxpayers' money. That's taxpayers' money, you know. And it should go to repairing roads, fixing lights, making sure that the garbage is collected on time, things like that. Kadas don't like law. Most Kadas, the vast majority of Kadas in our community, are, are lawbreakers. Mm -hmm. This is the reason they like using titles like commander and they use fake names, you know, or God, this, that, and the other. They don't want their true identity to be known because they are criminals. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we have to eject that, that sort of thinking. We shouldn't, lastly, let me just say this lastly, we should never buy into this idea that, oh, you've got now Kadas on the street, what's the government going to do with them? Well, the government doesn't owe them money and any, any living. They have to decide. They're men. They're young, able-bodied men. Figure it out. Figure it out. Don't wait for the government to figure it out for you. The smart ones, the smart kids, the kids that know what they want, the young people that are entrepreneurial-minded, they'll take advantage of this new ministry. They'll take advantage of this new platform. But those lazy kadas who just expect to sit on the side of the road, drink kachasu all day, smoke dope the whole day, and think that all they can do is, is walk up to a bus station and collect money. They won't know how to thrive in this new environment. In fact, in this new economic environment, every kada, every lazy kada will die. They will die and they will fizzle. And, 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 and that's, that's not our fault. That's not government's fault. That's not society's fault. That's their fault. So, so the, the, the smart kids 
who have a head on their shoulders will take advantage of this new environment. Uh, I've never supported the idea of council workers collecting money on behalf of council. I believe that the, the, this should be given to professionals. You know, this role of revenue collection, accountability, should be given to professionals. Government is not in the business of running businesses. That's not the role of government. And, and I think that the council needs to realign themselves. I know right now there's this new excitement of no, uh, remove the cutters, give it to the councils. I'm telling you, unchecked, over a period of time, the same council workers who are playing the role of collecting revenue, that the same ones are going to be susceptible to the same vices that the cadres were susceptible to. What we need is professionals. Professionals doing a professional job, collecting money on behalf of the government. Indeed, to survive in the new regime, the young people of Zambia are encouraged to become entrepreneurs and venture into various businesses as the government is ready and willing to support them. Kenisha Smoshibwe, reporting for Africa Equity Media in Southern Africa.